How is everyone doing tonight? Don't act like it's not anybody sitting here. (laughs) (laughs) (coughs) (laughs) All right. Um, Of course, we thank you all for joining us tonight. Those that are listening in, those that are watching us uh, live, um, we pray that something will be said that will help you uh, in your journey with the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And I'm Brother Hawk Bolden, and of course this is my lovely wife, Sister Antoinette Bolden, and we're always glad to bring you the word of the Lord concerning uh, family and, uh, and marriage. All right, today um, I received an email from a brother, and we're going to read this email and by the way, we may be doing that uh, in, the, uh, in the future. And we also want to encourage those of you um, who watch this program, if you have any questions concerning uh, family or marriage, any whatsoever, you, uh, we invite you to email us or call us and uh, leave your question. You know, if, if, if most of the time we're here to answer the phone, we answer the phone. So, uh, but... Uh, if you can't reach us, you can leave your message asking the question, and uh, we will be more than happy to answer the question. And so today, uh, the email comes from a brother of, of uh, ours who uh, regularly watches uh, the broadcast, and so he says, Good morning, Brother Bolden. I have a question for you. I know that you are married to your second wife, and please, brother, don't take this the wrong way. The other day I heard a guy preach about remarrying is a sin because as long as your first wife is living, you are in adultery. I heard your testimony about your wife, so I'm sure it's of God. What would you tell a person who has remarried and now, because of that sermon, feel convicted? I would love to hear a series on that. I'm sure you are going to bring it right. Can't wait. That's if the Lord allows you to. Much love. All right. So the question has to do with remarriage. And uh, he says that he heard a preacher preaching that uh, as long as your first wife or your first spouse is living, you are living in adultery. And so <clears throat> we're going to cover that. And uh, we're going to rightfully divide the word of truth so that we can have a better understanding of what God's word says. Amen. And especially, when, you know, when you think about today, it's, it's so many people that are in their second marriages, that are in their third marriages, who uh, are really living for the Lord. And so what, what do you do? You see now, look, look, look at what the, he says there. Uh, the preacher says that remarrying is a sin because as long as your first wife or your first spouse is living, you are in adultery. <clears throat> so we're going to cover that subject and we pray that we'll help some people, you see. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to the uh, 19th chapter of the book of Matthew. The 19th chapter of the book of Matthew, Jesus is teaching concerning divorce. And uh, we're going to start reading at verse 1. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him. And saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Now, what, what did the Pharisees come doing? Tempting. Tempting him. With what? A question I did. Hadn't we gone over that in the last uh, couple of weeks? How a lot of times when the enemy comes, it's 
with questions to try to trip you up some kind of way, you see. And so here, the devil, true the form, here he comes with a question. And uh, see, but the question is to tempt him, you see. Tempting him. In other words, testing him. Read that. What was the question? Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? For every cause. There's the, there's the, the trick right there. They didn't just ask, is it lawful for a man to put it to put away, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? They asked, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Let's go ahead and keep reading. And he answered and said unto them, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife? And they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. All right. Go ahead and let's go ahead and keep reading. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? Now that was that was the test. We know what Moses said. So now, what do you say? In other words. Are you a transgressor of the law of Moses, Mr. Preacher Man? <laughs> Are you a transgressor of the law? Moses, look at what they said. Moses then, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? Tempting. Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and keep reading. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. From the beginning, it was not so. There were no divorces. Now, like that. Now, let me explain. Let's, let's explain something here. Let's go back. Let's read verse 6 again. Wherefore, there, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. What therefore who hath joined together? God. What therefore God hath joined together. Now that's your key there. There are a lot of folks that are married that God didn't join together. Does everybody understand? You've heard me mm -hmm. say before that when God created... Adam, and he made Eve from Adam. Eve was designed for him. He said, I'm going to find you a, a help that's meat for you. I'm going to give you a help or create a help that's meat for you. Mm -hmm. He didn't make ten women and tell Adam, choose which one you like, you know, which one of them, whichever one you like. He made Eve for Adam. Does everybody understand? So mm -hmm. God joined that married couple together. The Bible says, What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Does everybody understand so far? Mm -hmm. You see that? And so in verse 8 he says, But from the beginning it was not so. He said, Moses has suffered you to put away your wives because of the hardness of your hearts. But from the beginning it was not so. So when we look at this, we have to look at both sides of it. From the beginning, people weren't getting a divorce. And, and so, you can't look at it just from the side of, well, once you get married, that's it. That's all of it. You got to stay there. You see? So, we say, uh, from the beginning, it was not so on the divorce side. But we also have to look on the marriage side. From the beginning, it was not so that folks just married whoever they felt like. They prayed about mm -hmm. who it was that God wanted them to be with. That's right. Does everybody understand that? And so on both ends of it, not just the divorce, nobody was getting a divorce, so God didn't permit divorce. On, in the beginning of it, not only just divorce, but in, in the marriage as well. People sought God before they got married. And I think that's a great point that you bring out because when you seek God for the one that you're supposed to marry and you know that God has brought you together, then there is no room for divorce mm -hmm. in that. 
not if you're following after God's will. Amen. And it makes all the difference, you know, in the world concerning marriage. Amen. And it don't mean that everything's going to be peachy king, you know, when you've married the one that God has for you. That's right. It doesn't mean that at all, you see. But it just it makes a difference when you're with the one that God has for you because divorce is not an option. You see, divorce Amen. means completely getting out of God's will. You Amen. see, and you understand that. It, there, there are no other options, you see. <clears throat> and so look at what he says in verse 8. Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. Let's go ahead and keep reading. Verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, mm -hmm. and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. So what we have is a lot of preachers. They take this verse and they build a whole doctrine of it on it, misinterpreting it. The question that this brother sent was that the other day I heard a guy preach about remarrying is a sin <clears throat> because as long as you your first wife is living, you are in adultery. And they get that from this scripture that we read here. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife. Let's let's X out the other part and shall marry another committed adultery. Now, that's the way they read it. That's the way they interpret it. But what did Jesus say? Except it be for fornication. Now, that's very interesting. Let's keep that word fornication in our mind. Let's go ahead and read this verse again. Chapter uh, verse nine. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication and shall marry another committed adultery and whosoever and whoso marry her. Marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery. Marrieth who which is put away? The one that was put away because of fornication. Does everybody understand? And so God does not have this rule of you get married and, and once that don't work out you're in trouble then. No more marriage for you. Read that again. And I say unto you whosoever shall put away his wife except... It be for fornication and shall marry another. Does everybody get that? So the idea is not just putting away your wife, but marrying another, except it be for fornication. Mm -hmm. So most preachers that take the stand that we read about in this email here. They, they, the stand is, you know, you can't, once you divorce, you can't remarry. Because that, that first wife or that first husband, that's your husband from here on until you meet the Lord. But here Jesus addresses the other side of it. You see that? Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whosoever and whoso marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery. Now you have to address which one is he talking about? Which one is put away? The one that was fornicating. Does everybody see that? Does everybody understand that? Now I, I want is does everybody still have the word fornication in their mind? Like I asked, okay. Let's address this. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for what? Fornication. And shall marry another, committed what? Adultery. Well, wait a minute. They're married, aren't they? Aren't the two of them married? Isn't he talking to married people? So why is it that he says, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committed adultery? Two different things there. Does everybody see that? Why didn't he say, whosoever shall put away his wife except it be for adultery? Y'all are married. Why? Because that word fornication carries a load with it. It's not right. just going and sleeping around. Mm -hmm. Does everybody understand? Who was it that gave Moses the law? 
God did. Moses just didn't sit down and come up with all that stuff on his own. When the Pharisees came to Jesus Christ and said, "Why do your disciples transgress the law, of, uh, the elder, you know, the the the, the uh, tradition of the elders by because they don't wash, they eating with unwashed hands?" And he said, "Why do you transgress the law through your own traditions and customs?" So let's go back. <clears throat> Verse 3, it says, The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Verse 7, they say, They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement to put her away? Moses didn't let everybody... He, in the law, it was not written that they could divorce for, for anything. That, what we read in verse 3, was their additive. They're the ones that were putting their wives away for every cause. Okay, I don't like you anymore, so we're getting a divorce. So in verse 7, they couldn't come back and say, well, why did Moses command to give a right in the divorcement for every cause? Because right. Moses didn't, didn't right. that wasn't in the law of Moses. Does everybody understand? Turn that down. So that wasn't in the law of Moses, you see. And so it, it, we have to read this carefully and, 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 and watch, watch carefully how it's worded. All right. We have to watch that carefully. This is where preachers get tripped up at. God does not go against his own word. Amen. You see, he, Jesus called it out here, whether they, I don't know if they caught it or not, the people who he was talking to at this time, except to be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. Go turn that one down up there. Everybody see that? And so Jesus named two different things, fornication and adultery. So why didn't he call what the wife was doing adultery? If all she was doing, you know, was going out and sleeping around. If she's out messing around, she's committing adultery. If she's sleeping around, she's committing adultery. So why didn't why didn't he he end with that? Why didn't he call it that? Committing adultery. Mm -hmm. Because fornication and adultery can be two different things. All adultery it's fornication. Every last bit of it is fornication. But not all fornication is adultery. Everybody understand? You can fornicate without committing adultery. And so let's ask this question. How does, why did he separate those two? How does a married woman commit fornication? Why didn't Jesus address that, the, the act of what she was doing as adultery? Why didn't he do that? You see, we have to be careful with that. Let's go real quick. Let's, let's go ahead and keep reading. Read verse 10. His disciples say unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. Okay, go ahead. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs, which were so born from their mother's womb. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sakes. He that is able to receive it, let him receive Everybody it. Everybody see that. So now let's go look at this law in, in, of Moses. Let's go to the 24th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. The 24th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. And uh, we're going to start reading at verse 1. Now this is the law of Moses concerning divorce. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, 
then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it give it in her hand and send her out of his house. Does everybody see that? Read that again. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it comes to pass that she find no favor in his eyes. Why? Because he hath found some uncleanness in her. Not because she lost her shape after having that first child. So Jesus Christ and Moses were not contradicting one another. Mm -hmm. Because he had found some uncleanness in her. Go ahead and keep reading. Then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. Everybody see that? So the word fornication literally means basically unclean. What is this uncleanness? It's not just adultery. It involves a lot of things. At, at, the, at the core of it, it's her leaving her husband and joining something else. It doesn't have to be another man. Does everybody understand? Well, let's think about it spiritually so. When the children of Israel went serving other gods, the Lord called that fornication. He called that adultery. Does everybody see that? Why? Because, and we read about that in, in the book of, of Revelation. I want to say it's the, uh, the first part of the book of Revelation. Jesus tells his people to return to their first love. That was, but why? Because they were fornicating. Does everybody understand? Let's, let's, go, let's go look at that real quick. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Let me show you what, what we're talking about. And this will help you to understand a little bit better this word fornication here. All right, uh, let's go to the second chapter of the book of Revelation, and we're going to start reading at verse 18. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira, write these things, saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because you suffered that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repents it not. You see that? So it's, he's not talking about a literal fornication that Je the spirit of Jezebel did. Jezebel introduced other things into the church of God and caused the people to go after those other things. That's where the fornication was. Mm -hmm. And so when Jesus in, in, the, in the 19th chapter of the book of Matthew refers to this woman as a fornicator, he's not talking about her just going out there messing around, you know, sleeping around with another man or for the man to be sleeping around with another woman for that, for that matter. You see, a fornicator was an idolater even if they made an idol out of themselves. It was someone that was unclean. Not talking about that kept a dirty house. Someone that left, in other words, what the root of the marriage was, was them two being joined together. Uh, you know, now, a fornicator could have even been a woman that was just out in the street all the time, not taking care of home, in other words. She left the base of that marriage. So when you fornicate spiritually, 
you leave your first love. And now, it don't mean that you don't pretend to be to belong to God. Who did Jesus Christ? Who is Jesus Christ talking to in this passage of scripture in the, in the second chapter of the book of Revelation? He's talking to the church at the tower, a church. So they didn't stop meeting together and functioning as a church. But they allowed this somebody with a spirit of Jezebel to come into that church and teach wrong doctrine and cause the people to, to leave God's true word and to go after idols. You see that? Now the Bible tells us that the, that the woman is to submit herself unto her husband as unto the Lord. When we see, so we as Christians, can we really say we're Christians if we don't submit to God? No. You see that? And so it's the same way when you're talking about fornication. Whatever she did to, to leave that marriage, not just... Why? Because God understood very plainly that adultery, we're talking about literal adultery, does not just start with somebody going and sleeping around. You've done a lot more before you get to that point. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's out committing adultery, they've left the marriage already before they ever went out and slept with somebody else. That, that, that physical sleeping with somebody else, that's just the fruit of true fornication, of true adultery. Does everybody understand? So let's not be, we have to look at God's word the way that it, it, it says it. He said, except a, a man had put away his wife, except for the cause of fornication and go out and marry another commits adultery. You see that? So we have to look at all of that together. And then at the same time, split it up so we could see exactly what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. He didn't call the woman an adulterer. He called her a fornicator. You see that? Somebody that's unclean. Not somebody, not talking about some woman that don't put on a, a deodorant. You see, what did, what did Moses say in the 24th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy? When, he, when that husband finds no favor, when, when the wife finds no favor in her husband's sight because of her uncleanness. In other words, it's something that she's doing. Mm -hmm. You see that? And so there's a, there's a lot that that entails. You see that when you're talking about that. So, let, let's move on now to, to the next part. Because so, we see we have to address it all. There are some people who are saved today who have been married more than once who have divorced their first spouse not because of fornication just because they couldn't get along or whatever the case may be. You see, uh, today you, you can get divorced for anything just because y'all, you know, we grew apart. So we're getting a divorce. We just think it's just not there anymore. Whatever. Let me make this clear. God does not excuse that. God does not excuse that. You can't, and then see, and then now that, that is what Jesus Christ was against. People just saying, well, you know, we just grew apart. We just grew and went in separate directions. They don't over here doing this. We hardly get to spend any more time together. Well, whose fault is that? You see? And so that's what the Lord does not excuse. You see? So there are some people who are married today in their second marriage and fornication or adultery or whatever never took place in the first marriage you know or in the previous marriage I should say and so today they have come into this knowledge well the Bible says that you know well, Jesus Christ said that if I'm divorced and I remarry for any cause except for fornication I'm committing adultery I've committed adultery 
So, and there are some preachers, preachers who, who speak what this brother saw and, you know, this preacher speak in the email, what he wrote to us in the email. These type, these same preachers will say, you have to divorce the one that you're with now. Because you're, if you're in adultery, you're, you're committing adultery. So you have to divorce that one. And then go back to the one that, that you were married to before. Let's, well, let's go see what the word says. Let's go back to the 24th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Again, God's word does not contradict itself. Let's read. Um, let's start reading at verse 1 again. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. Mm -hmm. And if the latter husband hate her, and write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and sendeth her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. Mm -hmm. After that she is defiled, for that is an abomination before the Lord, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. And, but see, these same preachers that preach, you need to leave the one that you're with and go back to your first spouse. What does God say about it? You can't do that. You'll defile the land when you do that. Everybody understand that? And so what, what do you do then? When you, if you find yourself in that situation where you feel like I'm divorced, not because God, you know, not lawfully, in other words, you know, the, the only reason that God gives for uh, an excused divorce from him, uh, by him, is fornication. And so if you find yourself being remarried without fornication being the cause of your divorce, what do you do? Let's go now to the seventh chapter of the book of First Corinthians. And uh, we'll start reading at verse ten. And unto the married I command, yet not I but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband but that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. Does everybody see that? So you got a spouse that don't want to be with you anymore? God says, if that unbelieving spouse depart, let them depart. Now, what did the last part of that verse say? A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. Everybody see that? In other words, when your spouse get in the car and say, I ain't coming back no more, that's it. He don't want you running behind them, snatching a bumper off the car to keep them with you. Because the fact of the matter is, you cannot keep people with you that don't want to be with you. And he says, you're not in bondage. That's right. In other words, you are not bound 
when that spouse leaves you. You are not in any bondage in such cases. Does everybody understand that? When they leave, what can you do? You're not bound by, okay, but we married for life. Everybody understand? When they leave and they go on with their life, what are you supposed to do? Just pull off in the corner somewhere and say, okay, God, I guess I can't get remarried. When they leave, Paul said, you are not in bondage in such cases. Let's go ahead and keep reading. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? And let's look at that last part of verse 15. But God hath called us to what? Peace. Peace. God's not saying, look, stay married to that joker. And just argue it out, just fight. Y'all can tear down the house. Y'all just stay married. When they want to leave, God says, allow, allow them to leave. Why? Because you'll cause more trouble in your home trying to hold on to something or someone that's not wanting to hold on to you. He said, allow them to leave. Let them go. And you are not bound when they leave. Now let's go, uh, let's go further down. Let's go to verse 26. I suppose, therefore, that this is good for the present, for the present distress. I say that it is good for a man so to be. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Are thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. Does everybody see that? So, this is for the people who find themselves in a position that they have remarried without having proper cause, according to the word of God, to get divorced from their first or second spouse or whatever, to get divorced, divorced previously from who they were previously married to. What does Paul say? Are thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. In other words, don't say, well, I've, I, I, I have done this thing wrong. And so now I have to get a divorce to make it right. Paul says, whatever state you're in, when you find the truth, you stay in that state. Why? Because you'll make a mess out of things. You, you're talking about a mess. I'm going to leave you who I'm married to and who I love just because, I, you know, I was ignorant back then. Well, we, you say, well, you say, well, Brother Bolden, show me that in the word, a case. Well, I can show you a case. Moses, who was married to an Ethiopian woman, a Midianite. Yep. That was something that his own brother and sister brought against him. Saying, well, has God only spoken by him? He's married to that, that Midianite woman. Now, when God called Miriam and Aaron to the table to address it, he didn't, he didn't defend Moses being married to this Midianite woman. He basically said, I've called Moses. Now, why were you not afraid to speak against him? In other words, what was it? When God called Moses, he's married to this Midianite woman. It was before he was walking in the calling that God had for him. In other words, Moses was ignorant of what he had done. He wasn't walking in the will of God when he did it. So God's not going to say, look, now that you're walking in my will, I want you to go back and fix every single mess that you've ever done before you got saved. All right. Amen. God says, you start from here and move forward. Now that you know what my perfect will is, you start from here. And you may say, well, Brother Bolton, I got a problem with that. Because the Bible says you're living in adultery. Are you? But the Bible don't say that. Amen. Jesus Christ said, in fact, let's go look at that. Uh, let's go to the 12th chapter of the book of Matthew. Start reading at uh, verse 30, or let's read verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin 
and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Well, how, how, what kind of manner of sin? All. Go ahead and keep reading. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. So every sin under heaven can be forgiven except one. And what was that? Blaspheming Blasphemy the Holy, the Holy Ghost. Ghost. And so when you find yourself in the position that we've, we're talking about, where you've gotten divorced unjustly, what do you do? You repent and move on. You don't waddle in it and say, well, and start looking at your spouse and saying, well, I shouldn't have married you. Why? Because now if we divorce, we're, we're still divorcing for the wrong reason. Right. You see that? So now we, we just have to stay with the word of God and do what God's words say. Amen. Many people make this word more complicated than what it need to be. You see. We don't serve a God that wants us to fix every mistake we made yesterday. That's right. You see. When you first get saved, you don't know everything that there is to know about God to begin with. Or know everything that there is to know about his word. You grow in those things. Amen. And so when you come to this knowledge, you don't say, well, now, Lord, I got to go back and fix every mistake I made. You can't undo sin that you've done. Mm -hmm. Right. The only thing you can do is ask for forgiveness and move on, you see. So let's, I pray that this has helped someone uh, in their walk with the Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> do anyone have any questions or comments? If you're on the phone and you have a question or comment, you can, uh, you can press five star <clears throat> and we'll take your question or comment. Or if you're sitting here locally, we'll take your question or comment as well. All right, don't look like we have any questions or comments. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? All right. <clears throat> well, we pray again that this was a blessing to, to you all, and uh, hopefully this has clarified some things and, and uh, put some people's minds at ease about whatever state they may be found in currently today, you mm -hmm. see. If, if God couldn't save you in your second marriage you see he wouldn't he just wouldn't save you he wouldn't he wouldn't deny you and say well look you're doing this so I can't save you or you've made this mistake so I can't save you we come to him because you know we've sinned that's the reason why we get saved to be saved from our sins mm -hmm. you see that and my prayers is that we'll understand that and we'll live by his word when we when we know to do we'll do it Amen.